So now that we are happy with the distance between these uh, torsos and the inside of the head, you can go on and make this one a solid again. So now we need to make a body. And I will go and find the high resolution spear. Just right high and take it into the workspace. And now we have this here. So I want to elongate it a bit. So I'm starting by doing that. And with the shift key and the corner here, I'm going to pull it up and make it bigger. And I'm going to make the resolution even better also. Now hippers are usually a bit choppy, so I am going to just play around with the shape until I feel like I have a shape that I'm happy with. So the next part for this one is to actually put it into the workspace and get it cut off at the bottom so we have a flat part to print. So I'm just taking a box that is already transparent and without using the shift key I'm just making it bigger and I am going to drag it down into the workspace minus 20 and now when I get a, I go to pull this down you can see it getting transparent in the bottom and that's where it will be cut so now I'm just going to place it and still play around with the sizing until I am happy with this now once I am happy with the happy hippo here I am going to mark everything and I'm going to align it again so I'm sure that everything is in the middle like so and then we're going to take this bottom part and the body and we are going to group them together now when we are printing we need to make it so that this ring the outside ring is free from the body part and this ring is free for the hardy heart <laughs> okay my danish to go um for the head part here and there's two ways to do this. You can make a new sphere and you can put it out uh, by making a hole and grouping them. Or you can just take the head, which we already made, and make a control C, control V, copy of it. And then you can ungroup. So you have these two negative forms and delete this. And then you can mark these and you can use the mirror tool to mirror them the other way around and now you can go ahead and actually use them on this part and it's just a question of sort of uh, feeling your way what works what doesn't when is it well placed and when isn't it i'm just going to start with the sphere and bring it into the body part and you can also make this a non-solid form so you can actually see what you are doing and as you can see now I'm just going to make this another color so it's easier to see you can see some of the, the blue is sticking out on this part and it's not centered at all so we're going to take this sphere and bring it over to the side and you can always use a smaller set up in the snap grid to make it finer so now we have a one millimeter and that's and i'm going to give it a little bit of free space so we're sure that it doesn't come in and get too tight on our print so now i go and add the solid colors this and i take this and make this a hole again and now I'm going to take this hole and group it with the body, like so. And we wait. There we go. So now if you make it a hollow again, you can see that there is free space enough for our printer to actually work. 
with this, like so. Now I can st I can still play around with the shape of this if I want to. I would like not to have that uh, gap up on the top. Let me just show you again. There's a gap here, and I know that printers can be hard. Uh, could be hard at work to actually fill that out. So I'm just going to lower the body into like this, so it actually just hits the top of this torus like so. Now, we have this box here, which was the sh cutting of the edge, so it actually prints better. So we can go in and place that, make it a hole, make the body solid, and group these two together. Like so. Now you have a sharper edge, and if you're not satisfied with how it looks, you can always ungroup again and go in and play around with the settings. Right now I'm going to take it and I'm going to angle the box differently so that it will easily uh, or more easily take off the edge of this without taking off too much. So I'm just going to now go down to the fine settings and bring in it out a bit so we just get the shape cut off like so. Now group with the body and the box. And now you have a good edge that's not sharp and easy to print. So the next part for this would be to add a tail and some legs. Now we know that this link works, so we are going to copy and paste one into our workspace and I'm just going to bring it out with the arrow keys. Now for legs and arms, these will be smaller than the standard uh, for the head, so I'm just going to shift and click on the corner part and drag it so it gets to be a bit smaller. You can also just add a number in here if you want to and it will keep that uh, sizing like so. I think this is good. Now I want the standing up part to go into the body and the laying down part to go into the leg of the hippo. So I just angle it. You always have these three tools to angle your stuff. And you can play around with it like so. So now I need a negative to cut out for the leg here. So just going to bring in a spear, make it 24 and make it a bit smaller. And I am going to bring it down into the work plane because I know that works best like so. So now we are going to make the body a hole and we are going to make this solid and in a different color and we are going to look at where it is placed for our legs to move. You see here it comes out here we need this to be totally covered so I'm going to go down to 0 1 millimeters again and I'm just going to do this on Gefühl, as we say in Danish, which is actually a German word for um, sort of just uh, sensing where things need to be placed, like so. Now, if I'm happy with this, there's no reason why I should start with the other parts yet, um, or separately. I might as well just copy and paste. The good thing about Tinkercad is that you can copy and paste, so we control copy control v and then we go up here and we mirror this way and then we just bring it up to one millimeters again and we bring it over here to get it on the other side of the body now if we want this to be straight with the body and the rest we can mark both these two and by holding shift down, you can mark the other two over here and you can group them all together. And then we're going to mark the whole hippo and we are going to say align again. 
that way they are 100% aligned. And then you can ungroup these again. And these two, you are going to make holes and you make the body solid. And like that. Then you can cut out the negative, but we might as well do the back legs before we do anything more. So I'm just going to grab these two, unmark the body, control copy, and then instead of control V, I'm going to, to use the control D ta uh, tab instead, because that places it exactly where the other part was. And then I am going to use the align and I'm going to align it the other way, like so. And with my tab key, I am going to bring it further down the body to where I am wanting the back legs to be, like so. Mm, I think there. Yes. So now this way we have them all aligned. Everything is in perfect order with each other and you can make the solid here. So now you take the solid body and you hold shift down and you mark only the transparent cube, uh, not cube spheres here and you group them all together and this way it will cut out the spaces for the legs like so. Now you have front and back legs already but now you need the leg itself to be put on here also. Now for cute little animals you can just make a sphere leg so we're going to bring in a normal sphere, make it a bit smaller and sort of take it into the platform I just did or workspace I just did F minus five this time. And then I am going to see where I want it. Now I like to cut off a part out here to sort of just uh, make it um, a place where it can stand. So I'm going to take a box and I am going to uh, bring it over and uh, tap it out here. You can, if you hold on the little bars here, it will snap to these uh, numbers instead of uh, you can freely uh, angle them out here. But if you tap on these, you will actually get a specific grid number. So we're going to take the box, bring it down a bit, and I think this leg will need to be just a bit smaller and also I might just play around with the shape, see what you like and what you don't like and just angle it in there. So we sort of have it in the middle here, not 100%. It doesn't be, have to be 100% each time we do anything, but it's fun to make them look also good, not just place them anywhere. But yeah, now I'm going to take this and I'm going to group it with the foot and I am going to group it like that. So now we have a flat part. Now we need to cut off the bottom part and you know wh what to do there. You take the box, you bring it out to the size, you take this black arrow thing and you pull it down and say minus 20 on the edge and you group it with the leg like so. So now we need the negative space here for the movement and we're going to do what we did last time. We're going to take the sphere, pull it into our workspace, make it transparent and we are just going to play around with the shapes and see how much or how big it needs to be for it to actually fit in here. So just use the arrow keys to sort of place it and you can always, as I do, make it another color and make the shape you need to cut out from hollow so it's easier to see what you are doing. And remember it's the upside down, the, the standing up torus that we need not to be able to see on this one. So if you go a lot out here, you can see that it's this torus we need to cover fully to make it articulate with the leg. So I'm just going to bring it in here and sort of see if it's covered everywhere and it is now. So we make the leg solid and we make this sphere hollow 
and we group it with our leg and we can then make it whole so we can see if we actually managed to cut everything out there's no place where this torus is getting hit by the leg part so this looks good so now we can take that and make it the same color so now that we have this we can go ahead and copy them to the other three legs and we actually are almost done with this design at this point so control copy control v we will take the uh, mirror tool and bring it over here and then just use the arrow keys of the keyboard to pull it over to the other side and it's a question of sort of uh, feeling your way where does it fit and it fits well here without touching anything so now that's good so now we mark both of them and we say control copy control d and then we mirror them again but this way this time and we use the arrow key to bring them down and you again can do the whole part so you can see that it doesn't touch anything it's not supposed to touch like so so now you have a hippo that's actually articulating and you can also bring in a little tail if you want you can just do a blob tail it's really up to you what you want to do with a thing like this sort of just pull up tail like this put it into the body and This looks good. So now you have a hippo that you can print like this in one color or multicolor if you want to. That's really up to you how you like to. You can add little details and stuff like that. But this is a tutorial on how to make the movement so that it prints well. So this is the basic shape of the hippo. And yeah, that's basically how you make moving parts in Tinkercad easy peasy and fun so if you want to see more of my stuff you can go to patreon.com slash sassycat 3 d and have a look at all the files I make I also do nomad sculpt so I might do some tutorials on that at some point but Tinkercad is where I started and it's such a fun program you can do so much with it so it's a good place to get going with 3d printing and designing for yourself so if there's any specific things you want to see as a tutorial please request it in the comments and i will see if i can make some more tutorials for you on a later date thank you for watching and again any questions feel free to ask and i'll see you guys soon bye bye